Yeah, somebody's like, that's cheating. I'm like, this is fucking drug hiding. There's no, there's no rules. This isn't Milton Bradley, all right? They fucking, they won. They did it exactly right. They got the pot and they ate it. the Skeptic Tank. Please give it up for Mr. Ari Shapiro, everybody! I, uh, I go to UFC events a lot, and uh, my friend gets me tickets, Joe Rogan. He's my buddy. And uh, I like to get high. I like to get super fucking high. I go to UFC events. The first three or four were really fun. You know, it was exciting, people punching each other. But then it got fucking boring after a little bit. So I needed to get blasted on marijuana edibles. Uh, yeah, my friend's like, how do you smuggle them in? I'm like, in your stomach, that's how you smuggle them in. You just, as soon as you get to the parking lot, you just eat that shit and then fucking have a great time at the UFC. It's like six hours long, and those pot cookies last sometimes six, seven hours. And we, in uh, and, and, and LA, we have the best system. You just go to a dispensary, like a fucking gentleman, stop by a store, say, what are you doing? Like, I'm going to a UFC event? They're like, oh, I got just the cake for you. And they'll fucking pick one out. They'll help you with it too. Anyway, so we take these pot breast strips. Have you guys ever had the pot breast strips? The marijuana breast strips? No? All right, well, you've had them. They're great. They come two to a pack. They're in those little, like, little Ziploc bags, the ones that are, like, that big. The ones that are, like, only for drugs. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing else you have to keep fresh in that size. <laughs> what else? Do you have to keep one apple seed from going sour? I don't know how they manufacture those and think they're for anything else. They're for fucking hair on, crack, and a little bit of pot edibles. So, they're breast strips. They're, they're like Listerine breast strips, but they have, I don't know how they make them. Scientists, pothead scientists that put marijuana in them. And they get you, the proper dose is half of one. They come two to a pack. So it's a party for four. And uh, yeah, you have to fold it in half and crease it and then tear it in half. And you eat half, the other person eats half. It does not make your breath smell good, by the way. Yeah, it makes it smell like weed. You, got, you need a real breath strip after you're done with it. So uh, one time I took a full one. Oh no, I took one and a, and a quarter because somebody wasn't gonna join in. So we're like, fuck it, let's just keep going. And I was high for 27 hours. Yeah, it's too long to be high for. I woke up in the morning, I was like, I'm really groggy. And then by 3 p.m. I'm like, why am I still groggy? Oh, I'm high as shit, I'm still super high. So I take them with Joey Diaz, we take them, we sit there, we're like, oh, I kind of feel them. And then after a while, we're like, oh. I'm like, yeah, I feel them. Like you just get blasted. It's a fun way to watch the fights. It really is. Uh, it's hard to score the cards. <laughs> like to score the rounds, like who's winning? I'm like, I don't know, they're both trying really hard. <laughs> I know they're both they're sweating, so maybe one round a piece, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, when somebody does get like, he won, 30-27. You know, like, oh, so close! And it was like, it was a blowout. You're like, well, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's the best way to watch fights. And uh, I would tell people on podcasts and stuff and on Twitter how I did it. And people are like, oh, that sounds so cool. And after a while, I was like, I feel bad for the people who can't live life like a California person does, you know? <laughs> Doesn't have access to the medical grade marijuana shit we have all the time. So I, I decided I was going to like bring some to Vegas to a fight and just give them to a fan and just let him watch a UFC the way I watch a UFC. Fucking <laughs> obliterated out of my mind on a marijuana edible. Uh, instead of just handing it to somebody, I decided I was gonna have a scavenger hunt. <laughs> yeah, so Rogan does the weigh-ins on Friday, Friday afternoons and then the fights are on Saturday nights, so half the, half the stadium will get shut down for the weigh-ins and I can walk back there with them. So I have access to half of the MGM Grand Garden Arena and I can just walk around and I just hit stuff. <laughs> I just, they're like that small, they hide anywhere. So I taped it to the bottom of a men's bathroom sink. And then I made a bunch of clues, like on the second floor, I made a bunch of clues and I put them on Twitter like every two minutes. I timed them out for when the fight started the next day. One was like, if you want to get high, go up a level, you know? And I made it on the second floor, you know? 
And then like, don't forget to relieve yourself before a long trip, shit like that. <laughs> and eventually somebody got to the bathroom, he followed the clues, got to the bathroom, was like, I think it's here, and fucking went underneath the sink and pulled off this little drug bag. <laughs> and he fucking did it, he had a great time. <laughs> yeah, I felt like Robin Hood, everybody. <laughs> it was wonderful. It's the power of giving. And I started doing it more and more. I got off on it. For 20 bucks, you can make someone's day. I would tape it, like they would tape it to a pillar, like down here, just this small, you know? You just tape it right there. I went to see if um, somebody found it. I was sort of walking by the section it was in, like this, like three fights later. I went by like this to like see. And some usher comes by and he goes, what you're looking for is no longer here. <laughs> yeah. I guess a bunch of people had come by, like looking. <laughs> Cause that's the thing, I don't tweet like, hey, party's over, somebody found it. I just like put the clues out and then when somebody gets it, they get it. <laughs> oh, it's great, it's so much fun. And then I started doing it at comedy shows too. One time I just taped those pot, uh, the uh, breast strips to the bottom of a chair in Philadelphia and then I wrote on Twitter. I was like, if anybody, no clues, I was like, if you follow me, look under your chair. If you find it, you get it. If not, somebody in the next show will get it. If not, somebody in the next show will get it. So the very first show, Wednesday night, uh, these two like 22 year old kids, they just waited till the show was over and went under all the chairs. <laughs> yeah, and they found it. Yeah, somebody's like, that's cheating. I'm like, this is fucking drug hiding. There's no, <laughs> there's no rules. This isn't Milton Bradley, all right? They fucking, they won. They did it exactly right. They got the pot and they ate it. <laughs> so, yeah, it was a lot of fun. One time I hit a, a, a lollipop in uh, Austin outside in the parking lot, outside Cap City Comedy Club, and um, some pregnant lady found it. <laughs> Yeah, she's like, is this safe to eat? I'm like, I don't think I've done any studies on that at all, so. Yeah, I mean, pro yeah eat it, I would eat it. <laughs> Better safe than sorry, you know? Because what if she didn't eat it, and then they do tests, like, years later, and they find out it would have been safe, and she didn't eat it? She'd never forgive herself. <laughs> is that what better safe than sorry means? Am I interpreting it right? So my friends are like, you're getting in trouble. Like, I'm not gonna get in trouble. I'll be fine, I'll be totally fine because I'm a good person, you know? I'm like Robin Hood. Robin Hood didn't get in trouble, did he? <laughs> All right, anyway, back to my story. <laughs> so I was in the Mall of America and uh, people were like, are you gonna bring uh, those, are you gonna do what? We called it Hunt for the Edible. That's what I did. That was a hashtag on Twitter, Hunt for the Edible. And I would delete all the clues after somebody found them. I would go back there and fucking delete them all. But anyway, so the Mall of America, I was like, well, what better place to bring fucking drugs? You know? So I hid, uh, I hid these uh, marijuana breast strips in, a, in an underwear aisle of a J. Crew at the Mall of America. <laughs> yeah, there was, a, uh, there was a comedy club upstairs. Rick Brunson's House of Comedy was all the way upstairs. And I hid it and then I made a bunch of clues. And like, I mean, this is big. Mall of America is massive. There was like 50 people running around the Mall of America <laughs> looking for these pot breast strips. And uh, anyway, then I, st I set all the clues on like auto like release. So every two minutes, one would go out. And then I was outside my show getting ready to go on. I was just texting. And uh, all of a sudden I heard uh, somebody to my right, Ari, can we talk to you? And I looked up and it was a Mall of America cop. <laughs> yeah, and on my left was a Minneapolis like state trooper. And I was like, well, fuck, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was like, what's going on? And they go, did you hide uh, drugs in the underwear aisle of a J. Crew? <laughs> And I mean, I was gonna deny it, but that wasn't a lucky guess, you know? <laughs> like they must have already known at some point. They're not just going to random people. Do you hide drugs in a J-Crew? Do you hide drugs in a J-Crew underwear? Do you hide drugs in a J-Crew? No. So I was like, yeah, I did, so. And they're like, it's super illegal here. I'm like, yeah, obviously, I'm really scared. <laughs> By the way, mall cops in general, they go fuck themselves, they don't have any power whatsoever. I was with Dice once and he was smoking in a mall. I think the Beverly Center. And I was like, what are you doing, man? You can't smoke in a mall. And he goes, really? I'm smoking, so. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, and then some mall cop comes up, he's like, yeah, you gotta put that cigarette out. He goes, okay. And he fucking stamps it out. I was like, yeah, sorry. And then, uh, and then we walk away and I'm like, see, you got in trouble. He's like, no, I smoked half a cigarette. You smoked none. <laughs> Good point, Dice Man, good point. So, uh, but these Mall of America cops, they're like top shelf. Of those shitty mall cops, they're the best of the best. 
they have their own jail and stuff. So I had to talk out my way out of it with the mall cop and with the fucking state trooper. And so uh, Rick Brunson, he got on the phone. He lives in Edmonton, the guy who owned the comedy club. He got on the phone with me. He goes, don't smile. I'm going to talk to you. Don't smile, because they're looking at you. So no matter what I say. Like, act like I'm yelling, I guess. I don't know. He goes, first of all, I don't give a shit. Like, I know this is an early booking for you, but we'll have you back. Don't worry about it. But um, I could talk you out of trouble with the mall cops. They wanted to ban you from the mall forever, but that's not going to happen. But he goes, what, did you hide acid in an H&M? And I was like, no. Is that what people are saying? And he goes, yeah. I'm like, no, I mean, tell, yeah, keep saying that. That sounds way cooler, but no. I hid marijuana at a J Crew, And... Uh, and he goes, what is that? I'm like, it's marijuana breast strips. He goes, they make your breath smell good? I'm like, no, they do not. They make your breath smell awful. And, uh, and he goes, well, listen, okay, you're for sure going to jail. Uh, <laughs> I can get you out of trouble with the mall cop or the Minneapolis trooper, like, you're going to jail. But I need you to do me a favor, man. Next time you come, like, you gotta bring me one of those breast strips. <laughs> I was like, all right, fine. And so I got back, they start calling like a head, like anyone else in town that could headline the show, because I'm not gonna be able to, you know? <laughs> Right then, some fan, by the way, came over. A lot of times my fans give me like weed on the road, which is pretty cool. And uh, some lady, she's like into her purse, like, Ari, can I talk to you? But because the cops were like behind me by like, five feet. And I was just like, no, no, don't. <laughs> like, how do you like, you know? It's that thing when you open up the door and a cop's there, like, everything all right? And they're like, yeah, everything's fine. You know? <laughs> but I had to say it without saying it, you know? And so I was like, no, no. But then it was just Swedish fish, so. Uh, <laughs> So anyway, so this Minneapolis trooper, he's like, explain to me what happened here. And I was like, I, I hide, you know, <laughs> marijuana across the country <laughs> in like different areas to give people the experience of what it's like to live in California. And he was like, you sell this stuff? I'm like, no, I don't sell it. I just give it away. I'm like Johnny Appleseed, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, Johnny Apple Weed! Fuck! For sure that's what I should have said! And uh, I'm like, first of all, how'd you find out that I did that? And he goes, here's your Twitter feed, man. It's just a list of clues. It's just you going, here are the drugs I'm about to hide. And then the next one's like, here's where I'm hiding the drugs. And then fucking 17 clues on how to find the place where you hit the drug. He's like, I'm not gonna get my fucking detective badge for this. <laughs> and I guess what happened was, the first guy to follow the clue went in there, found it, went right to the underwear. I was like, oh, here it is. He's like, yeah, and they left. And then somebody else was following the clues like two minutes behind. And they went in there and they're like, oh, nothing's there. And they go, it must be here somewhere. And they just start fucking <laughs> throwing shit around in the underwear out of the J. Crew until they got kicked out. And then five minutes later, somebody else would come in and just start fucking throwing, where the fuck are these drugs? It happened like eight or nine times to them. And they're like, are we into the worst terrorist attack of all time? So then somebody called one of the employees and was like, hey, I saw there's some drugs being hit at your thing. And they found me, it was super easy to find me. And so uh, this cop was like, um, all right, so explain to me, it's marijuana inside Inside a breast strip? I'm like, yeah. And he asked me the fame, does it make your breast smell? No, it's awful. <laughs> and I think he thought I was just like a good person, I guess. And I wasn't, I didn't have any ill intention. I wasn't selling it, I was trying to make a profit. I was just giving it to people. Johnny Appleweed. <laughs> and he goes, uh, he goes, so explain this to me. Uh, was it a real breast strip or was it a marijuana breast strip? And I was like, it was a marijuana breast strip. And he goes, no, no, no. Was it a real breast strip or was it a marijuana breast strip? And I was like, you, no, no, no. You didn't hear what I just said? I just told you the fucking answer, idiot. You fucking hard of hearing? It's a marijuana breast strip. And he goes, no, idiot. L listen to what I'm saying to you out loud where people can hear me. Was it a real breast strip or was it a marijuana breast strip? And I was like, oh, all right. Oh, man, I misunderstood the question completely the last two times. I did not get that at all. Now that I hear it completely, I'm telling to strike from the record my other two answers, because those are completely wrong. Uh, that was a real breast strip. I hit a real breast strip in the J. Crew underwear aisle. And he goes, well, then that's just mischief, so I don't see a crime here. Go apologize to the manager of the J. Crew. And he let me off. 
And that is when I figured out what white privilege is. 